Who is Xiaomi? No, she's not the latest Chinese starlet to hit the screens. And no, it's not a new brand of baby food. Xiaomi is smart, she's a phone, and she will be making her debut in Singapore this year after recently invading the Hong Kong and Taiwanese markets. Chinese smartphone manufacturer Xiaomi made the news official on 2nd January when its Vice President for Global, Hugo Barra of Google fame, announced it on various social media platforms. But how is Xiaomi going to survive in our saturated smartphone market with big boys like Apple and Samsung already firmly entrenched? Keep watching! For those of you unfamiliar with the brand, Xiaomi has been causing waves in the Chinese smartphone market. Despite being a new player with its recent launch in 2011, Xiaomi is now the fifth best-selling smartphone brand in China. The brand sold more than 18.7 million smartphones in 2013. The company was recently valued at 10 billion US dollars or 12.7 billion Singapore dollars. More than double of BlackBerry and almost half of Sony. Their strategy for this meteoric rise? selling high-end phones at rock-bottom prices. Xiaomi's latest offering is their Mi 3, which was launched in October last year. Judging from its specs, the smartphone is a flagship device in every way. But where the Xiaomi Mi 3 shines is its price. At a launch price of 1,999 renminbi, Xiaomi is retailing its flagship for only approximately 400 Singapore dollars without carrier subsidies. There are two versions of the Mi 3 with the only difference in the processor for different markets. One version is powered by a NVIDIA Tegra 4 processor which can be found in products like a NVIDIA Shield and the ASUS Transformer Pad. The other version is powered by a top-of-the-range Snapdragon 800 processor which is also found in flagship smartphones like the Samsung Note 3 and the LG G2. Singapore will most likely get the fastest Snapdragon 800 version which will be more compatible with our local networks. But apart from the different processors, the phones are identical. Both versions have 2GB of RAM and both run on Xiaomi's Mi UI interface which is based on Android. The screen is a 5-inch 1080p Full HD LCD display and it comes in both 16 and 32GB variants. Imaging needs are taken care of by a 13MP camera from Sony together with a front-facing 2MP camera. They even managed to stuff a huge 3050mAh battery into the 5-inch device. While we have yet to try out the phone in real life, it does have a very impressive spec sheet. If you take the Mi 3 and compare it with other flagships like the Samsung Note 3 or the LG G2 on the smartphone market right now, you would be hard pressed to find much between them in terms of horsepower. All these bells and whistles for approximately 400 Singapore dollars. To put things into perspective, let's take a look at the current retail prices of other manufacturers' flagship devices. A firm favourite with Singaporeans, Samsung is retailing its S4 at $848 and its Note 3 at $998, while Apple's latest starts at $988 for an iPhone 5S and $848 for an iPhone 5C. An LG G2 will set you back $848. But how will Xiaomi do when it finally lands in Singapore, where it's Apple and Samsung country? Well, if you ask us, it will all depend on price. In order to lure local consumers as an untested new kit on the block, Xiaomi must be able to sell its flagship at a much lower price as compared to its competitors. Judging from the queues at the launch of flagship smartphones here, Singaporeans love their cutting-edge tech. From the looks of it, the Xiaomi Mi 3 seems to fit the bill from the spec sheet point of view. If the brand can stick to its attractively low price tag as it did on home turf, Xiaomi might just sway Singaporeans. While there is still no definitive word on when the Mi 3 will hit local shores or if its low pricing will remain, we can be sure of one thing. Xiaomi must be prepared to fight tooth and nail to capture the fickle hearts and minds of the local consumer. <laughs>